Hi, and welcome back to episode three of this vlog journaling the growth of our tiny tropical garden in the southwest of the UK. We've come a long way since our last video. The turf is down, we've built a rock garden and we've put lots of plants in. It's finally getting a relaxing tropical and exotic feel. Now you might remember from the first episode, when we moved into this garden, there was nothing but solid, heavy clay. We're finally covering the last visible parts of this heavy clay, but it's gonna take some work. To prepare the ground for laying turf, I dug in a lot of potting grit. This will help with drainage and it will break up the clay clumps. I also added a lot of topsoil and chicken manure to add nutrients to what is essentially dead soil. So it was a bit of a struggle to find somewhere selling turf this early in the year, but me being as impatient as ever, I managed to source some. I stood on a plank when laying the turf so that I didn't compress the clay soil. And I used these offcuts of the turf to fill in the gap between the rockery and the stream. We built a raised bed rockery to improve drainage above the clay soil, but it also adds instant height to a small garden and breaks up the area a bit. Now this is a new plant for me. It's a type of geranium, but it has this really cool mangrove tropical looking stem. In the summer, it should be covered with a tuft of magenta flowers that you'll have to look through to see down the rest of the garden. We've also planted this small fig tree. I've had it in my parents' garden for years and we're gonna try and grow it flat against the south facing wall. This should help save space in our tiny garden, but also help the fruit ripen. We've restricted the roots of the fig tree by planting it on top of a thin layer of rubble and planting it in half of its container. However, this means that you can see some of the plastic on the pot. So we've planted these heaved shrubs in front of it, which are cuttings from my uncle's garden, as well as this formion, which is again, another cutting from a friend. To add some greenery and color in front of the fig tree, I've planted some small marigolds inside of the pot with plenty of grit to stop them rotting. This tropical date palm is one of the main plants in our raised garden. It should grow quite wide and tall and waft around in the wind, adding a nice tropical vibe. Just behind the date palm, I've planted this young clumping bamboo. Now clumping bamboos will grow tall, but not very wide. I'm hoping this will add privacy and block some of the wind, as well as hiding that ugly fence. The final palm I've added into the raised broccoli part of our tropical garden is another dwarf fan palm. This should mirror the palm on the other side of the garden to add some symmetry and tie the parts of the garden together. To start adding some color into the garden, we've added these pelagoniums, and their great big blousy blossom adds a lot of impact into the garden. We've also added two clumps of Asiatic lily. There's one red one and one orange. When these bloom in the summer, the hot red and hot orange will add to that exotic tropical feel. This plant's new to me, but we saw it at the garden center and it sold itself. It's called Fragrant Star. It's got heavily scented yellow flowers and this nice variegated foliage. Now this primula is another plant that's in bloom. It sends up this awesome orb of purple flowers and every time it's finished blooming, we cut the spike down and it seems to send up another. I have always wanted one of these in the garden. It's called Arundo Donax. It looks a bit like a cross between sugarcane, a reed and bamboo, and it should grow to be over six, seven foot tall by the end of the summer. I've just cut this one down to encourage new shoots. Now my brother kindly gave us two clumps of this sedum. I've put one in the raised bedrock garden and one behind the stream. They look great by the rocks and they both seem perfectly happy. Now just in front of it, you can see a small umbrella palm in the pond. This is an aquatic plant that I divided from my parents' garden. Now this is one plant I think is essential for any tropical garden. I'm hoping it has enormous leaves by the end of the summer, but as you can see, it's only just started its growth. When I finished laying the turf, I hated how neat it looked against the edge of the stream. So I bought a few mat forming plants and planted them between the grass and the pebbles, hoping that they'll start to sprawl amongst the pebbles in the stream. I tried to make sure that they all either flowered white or yellow so that they tie in with the rest of the tropical garden. I think the blooms look great early in the year and the insects are already enjoying them. Are you surprised at how much I'm already squeezing into the tiny garden? Now, let me show you what I'm planting on the other side of the stream. The soil here is really shallow because of the builder's rubble that I found in the garden. So at the top of the stream, I've planted succulents and more mat forming ground cover plants. That lovely golden grass is divided from a plant I had in the garden that I kept through winter. Those small green shoots in the middle are red hot poker. I bought these plants as dry roots in a homeware store. They cost £1.50, but I potted them up and they seem to be doing well. I've moved this spotty laurel since the last video. You see, after I laid the turf, the garden felt very green on one side and not on the other. 
So I wanted something to balance that out. Its lush green foliage is doing the job perfectly and it seems very happy where it is now. I've squeezed both of the cord lines into this bed because the builder's rubble underneath helps with the drainage. They also look great from all sides, which plants in the middle of the garden, in my opinion, need to. At the back of the bed is my bigger dwarf fan palm. Don't forget, this is the winter bargain I got just before Christmas for £22. I haven't planted it yet, but I'll get round to it. Now these are new to the garden. We've edged the plant beds with logs and sticks and twigs. We saw this done at Abbotsbury Subtropical Gardens and we really liked how natural and organic it looked. Now because this garden was really concrete when we moved in, we want to bring as many natural things in as possible. Now here's the plant bed that I showed in the very first vlog. Everything is coming along well and there's a few new additions. Let me show you. Here's another clump of that umbrella palm that I told you about in the pond. I've buried this inside of a pot to stop its roots becoming invasive. We got this camellia from the garden centre and it looked very poorly. I've planted it in ericaceous compost with ericaceous fertiliser, but we can't get it to cheer up. Any advice would be massively appreciated. Here's another one of those reed looking plants, Arundo Donax. This one's just green, it's not variegated, but should still reach six or seven foot by the end of the summer. Now here's a tip for you. I cut all of the leaves off my heucheras and buried them under about an inch of soil. Very quickly, they brought out all of this fresh new foliage. You can see my tiny Trachycarpus fortuni palm tree there. It got through all the snow in that spot and is now putting out new leaves. Now remember I planted these prunus to hide the concrete upright fence posts. They seem really happy where they are and finally they started putting out new leaves so they should gain some height and fill out their spaces. Now these two cuttings are a sneaky addition to this bed. They're young roost trees and my uncle gave them to me. They have great tropical foliage and they tolerate clay soil and wind, which means that when they get taller than the fence, they're gonna help to create that tropical microclimate for the garden. Again, that generous uncle of mine gave me this yucca, a cutting from his garden. I've put it in the ground and it seems to really like where it is. Now in the top left, you can see a green euphorbia. This is one of my favorite plants in the garden. Hopefully, it will grow into a big rounded shrub and will spill out over onto the path. It seems very happy where it is and I've just noticed it started to put out some flowers. Now this is a sorry looking clump of Crocosmia. It has orange flowers, it was divided from a plant in my parents' garden. However, I think they sabotaged it with weed killer and the lupin behind looks very healthy. You'll see these in everybody's tropical garden. It's Fatsia japonica and this one's really starting to chuck out some fresh growth. There's loads of new leaves and it's growing two stems now, which should mean it will fill out nicely. Do you remember that stowaway foxglove from the first video? Well, this is it. It's put on so much growth, but I don't know how you can tell whether it's gonna flower this year or next. I wasn't planning to plant the foxglove. I was actually planting this. It's Lily of the Valley from my granddad's garden and he wouldn't let me touch it when I helped him garden because it was from his mother's. Around the base of the foxglove, I've added these gladioli bulbs. Though I wouldn't normally put them in a tropical garden, they were gifted to me, so I've put them to use. I'll admit it, this plant was a bit of a treat. It's a type of Magnolia grandiflora that has a crimson underside with evergreen leaves. I've planted it next to the patio because its heavily scented flowers should smell great in summer. And that's the second clump of that blue fescue grass I divided in the first video. They've both grown on very, very well. Because I treated myself to some plants from the garden centre, I can't buy a propagator, so this is how I'm doing it. I've put the seedlings under some horticultural fleece inside of the container that I'm growing the rosebush in. So far, so good, with a few casualties to slugs. Right now, this DIY propagator is home to crackerjack marigold seedlings, which are like normal marigolds, except they grow really tall. This was unexpected. The neighbour's acer has come into leaf. Because we moved in in winter, I had no idea how it was gonna look but I think it's gonna really help achieve the tropical look in our garden. I finally planted all of those rosemary plants. I put them in some old terracotta pots we had. I set these up around the base of the blue planter that we have that disguises the base for our washing line. This one's a real treat. It's Musa Bastu or Hardy Banana. I'm gonna plant it inside of this container, but I'm doing a bit of an experiment. 
I've combined grass clippings and chicken manure pellets with the soil. And hopefully, as this breaks down, it will feed the banana through the summer. That generous uncle also gave me this aloe. I spotted a young aloe inside the same pot as this bigger one, so I've divided them up and put them into their own pots. Right at the top of the stream, I've put all of the succulents that we used to have in the old terracotta pots when we lived in the flat. They all seem very happy amongst the stones here, baking in the heat. They're forming nice clumps, and some of them even look like they're gonna go into flower. All of the running bamboos that we left in their containers throughout winter have done really well, and they're all putting on signs of lush new growth. Now I bought this jasmine because I really want to get the fragrance of jasmine flowers on the patio during the day and of an evening, but I made a mistake and bought the non-evergreen one. But I'll work with what I've got for now, and it smells amazing. As well as that, there's this old clematis that I used to have on the terrace outside our flat. I mulched it with compost at the start of the year, and now there's lots of new growth and loads of flower buds. Next to that is a small eucalyptus tree that I was gifted. I'm hoping this one gets quite big too. So there we go. My tiny tropical garden is starting to come together. I'll tell you what, it was so much nicer being able to plant things instead of dig holes and lay concrete. As ever, if you have any questions or advice, I'd love to hear from you. Comment below and I'll get back to you. And if you want to follow along on the journey of me growing my tiny tropical garden, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.